Hello and welcome to my channel On The Hoop Crochet where we talk about wearable crochet style and let's find out what's been on the hook. Well as you know we are expanding our horizons here and we're talking about crochet but we're also talking about embroidery, we're talking about sewing, we're talking about making new items, we're talking about new patterns. So we're talking about lots of different things. I wanted to um, expand my program just a little bit so it's interesting for lots of people and you might actually learn a new craft or want to learn a new craft. Uh, you might want to pick that up. So it's for everyone who watches my channel. So today I have, and I have a list of things I want to talk about, but today we have a, a, a new top to show you. We have a video from Joe who makes the custom project bags, a short video, very beautiful. We have two whips to talk about. We have one finished object, and if you've been on my Instagram feed, you would know that that is finished. Um, I'll show it here in just a second. Um, we also have a um, yarn haul, a little bit of a yarn haul. It's not huge, but I did order some yarn and I want to show it to you. It's very beautiful. And then we have a, um, a little section about sewing and also a giveaway. So everything is connected there and I want to go down through my list and talk to you all about all the things I've been crafting all week. So sit back and have a cup of coffee or uh, some iced tea and enjoy the show and grab your crochet project or any other project you might be working on and let's talk crafts. Okay, so today what I'm wearing, I am wearing a summer sweater. It's lavender and lace, which was uh, made with cotton fair. About 700 yards is what I used. I used an eye hook, which is a 5.5 millimeter hook to make this sweater. Now you do have to have a tank top under it and I'll get up and show it to you. It is a, uh, an, um, a tan colored top underneath it, so it's not too definitive. You could wear black under it and wear black pants. That would be a really nice look. Uh, but this is made from the lavender color in the Cotton Fair. It's a number two yarn made with an eye hook. So uh, it didn't take long to make. As you can see, the stitches are pretty far apart. There's a lot of nice air flowing through there. <laughs> And uh, it has some design elements that I really like. The lace around the neck, the lace at the back across the back, just a little bit there and a little bit at the top of the front. Those are the design elements that I uh, put into this pattern. Here's the pattern. It's out on Etsy. Um, it's very easy to make. Crystal's been at the beach. <laughs> she took a vacation and she came back and went in the closet and said, I want to wear this very summery top. So I said, okay, Crystal, you can wear that. So here she is. She is wearing the cowl neck top that I made last year. And this is a very neat top. I never wrote the pattern for it. Um, I was just starting my YouTube channel and I was making things that I thought were interesting and I wasn't really thinking about patterns. I was just kind of explaining how I made things. And uh, I imagine some of you made some things, but some didn't because it's hard to dive into a whole sweater and not have a pattern for it. I totally get that. Um, some people are very adventurous and they might do that, but a lot of people want a pattern that they can go by and they can mark off and they can use it um, to make a successful sweater and not be too challenged. And I totally get that. I wouldn't want to spend my time on a top where I, uh, that someone else made that I didn't have a pattern for. So I wanted to show you this. I, 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 Crystal found this in my closet and I haven't worn this at all this year, but I really, really like it. And I went back and I found the video where I talked about this. The whole video was just about this top and I will put it at the end of the video and you can click on that and watch it after you watch this one. I don't really want you to go away and then come back because I'm going to talk about this just for a second right now. This is the cowl neck top and what it is is a top that is shaped along the sides so that the neck buckles and makes a cowl front. Now I will probably, if I make this again, I would make a larger cowl, but this is a very nice treatment of a cowl front summer over top. Now you'd have to wear a tank top under this and in the video that you watch next you will see that I had on a black tank top and black pants 
and it's a very nice look. It's a good summer over sweater. If you like to wear tank tops but don't really want to go out with just the tank top on, which is the way I am, I like to have something over the tank top. So this is a nice little over blouse that you can wear uh, to dress up an outfit and make it look really special. So this is made mostly in a, a lace stitch. It is uh, a little bit more of a solid bottom here and the back is, and it's sleeveless of course, and the back is done in the lace stitch, the whole thing. So it doesn't take long to make this at all. It's very quick make. Um, I made this from Barocco Estiva, and here is what the label looks like. This is Barocco Estiva, and what this is, is a tape yarn, and I'll show that to you. It's a tape yarn. It's flat. It's a little bit of a brownish yellow, um, a real pretty, and it's called Curry. This is a number five weight yarn. I'll hold this up there where you can see it. It's a tape yarn, very beautifully made in Italy. And I bought this at the Destin Yarn Shop when I was there. And you can buy it other places. You can even buy it on Amazon, as I explained in my other video. Um, this I made with the NP hook, which is a 10 millimeter crochet hook. I'll hold that up there where you can see it. And it's very easy to use. This just slips right across the tape yarn. I really enjoyed making it. It didn't take long at all to make. So it's not difficult. Now I want to ask you a question. If you watch the video after this one and still want me to write the pattern, I'll be glad to do that. I will write the pattern. I'll put it out on Etsy and you can buy it if you want to. If you want to make one on your own, you could probably do that. If you're adventurous, and um, a reasonably good crochet or you can make this without any direction at all. So let me know if you want me to write the pattern and I'll be glad to do that in the next couple of weeks. Um, get that out there. There are also other tape yarns that you can use. I've seen other brands but this is a really nice brand. This was $24 last year at the Destin Yarn Shop. There are other brands of tape yarns that you can buy. This is a number five bulky weight yarn so be sure you get that if you're going to get um, a tape yarn and make my pattern with it you might want to buy a number five tape yarn i think you can buy it in other brands that be sure to watch the video put a comment below and let me know if you want me to write the pattern for that and i'll be glad to do that so thank you crystal i hope you had a great time at the beach she said yes she did so we're going to let crystal take a break over here and talk about some other things. Next on the list is a video by Joe of Joe Totes who makes all the beautiful project bags and she has made a video about a beautiful western bag that she made. Now we did try to get some garden video in but we couldn't get any audio so maybe she'll send that next time but right now this is a video about the bag that she made this week. I'll show you this bag that I just finished. Now last week I was on a little vacation with part of my family and uh, we went to a little place uh, on the Panhandle in Florida called Creighton Beach and it was quite lovely. We were in a little cottage and um, got to go to the beach and then we had a pool at the cottage and I got a little bit too much sun and ended up with sun poisoning but you know that's I guess what's going to happen to me the rest of the time that I'm exposed to the sun so I have to be very careful but um, it was really nice to get away. So before I, I left, Jeannie and I went to Lana's quilt shop, and I think she has a video that actually uh, interviews Lana and her um, one of her assistants, Debbie. And uh, so when we were there, I found some fabric that just caught my eye because I have this one customer, Cheryl, that lives in South Dakota that has been waiting on a southwestern themed bag and we had this gorgeous fabric picked out of feathers and she really liked the muted tones and and all of that and it was really nice but the fabric never came and i emailed the seller on etsy and just never could get anywhere so we finally had to start looking elsewhere well i had some southwestern fabric in my stash and i never did show that to her because i really didn't think that it was something that she would like because of what she told me that she wanted but I showed it to her and she said, oh, that, that looks fine. Let's go with that. Well, when I was at Lana's, I found this other fabric. And so I took a picture of it after I bought it, went ahead and purchased it, took a picture and sent it to Cheryl and she was thrilled with it. So I had a feeling that she really didn't like what I had in my stash as much as she 
said, yes, let's go with that. And I think she's really going to love this bag. This is such a different bag than anything that I've made to date. And it's one of my favorites. I mean, it just turned out so beautiful. And you can see it here in the back. I hope that open window doesn't cause too much glare, but I had to see my garden as I'm sewing. <laughs> I actually went out on my back porch yesterday. The humidity was very low, so I took my sewing machine out there, put it on a big table, and just sewed all day long. Made this bag until I had to come in today and finish it up a little bit. But this is the, uh, Cheryl's bag. It's Southwestern themed, and you can see she likes the turquoise and the corals. This isn't a true coral, but it's kind of a brown and a um, kind of a brick red brown. I don't know. It's kind of like a coral. I guess you can see that a little bit better if I hold it close up. This is the medallion that I made for her that I thought had kind of a Southwestern flair. The inside of the zipper pouch has a lot of the colors, plus... Uh, a little bit more extra, and I like to do that sometimes, just add a little bit of contrast. The side pouches have an orange, which is like a coral on the inside, but it also coordinates very well with this orangey red, brick red type that's in this fabric. So this is the same fabric on the front and the back, and then I turn the fabric sideways to make the sides, which I thought turned out pretty well. So let me show you that a little bit better by stretching it out. So then the tabs, I use the uh, same fabric as the pouch. And then I found this brown fabric in my stash, which really complemented the brown and the little diamonds on the pattern in the um, kind of an Aztec Southwestern uh, pattern. And then I did the same with the bottom. So I've never made a brown bottom before, <laughs> but I did on this one and I thought it turned out really, really well. So I also had a brown zipper in my bag of zippers. It's a darker brown, but I thought it looked better than the black, although the black would have gone as well. But anytime I have a colored zipper that I can use on my bags, I tried to do that. This is the, uh, the charm that I put on the end of her zipper. And then uh, this is the, the embroidery that I did on the handle. Kind of goes with the Southwestern design and it's in turquoise. And then on the inside, she wanted a zipper, pocket, and a pouch. So the pouch matches the fabric on the outside. And on the inside of the pouch, I put the, uh, the orange or more of the coral color that you see on the inside of these pouches. And then on the uh, inside zipper, I put the same fabric as I put on the outside pouch. And then uh, because I had a C... <laughs> I did a charm for this zipper with a C that's got the browns and the blues and the turquoise. And then this one has um, the turquoise too, as you can, you can see, I showed you that earlier, I think. So that's it for this bag. Um, of course, it has the stitch marker, a little tab and some little stitch markers on it that she can use. And um, I just want to thank Cheryl. I, you know, you get to see me, but I don't ever get to see you. Uh, but Cheryl's been very patient, and uh, she waited beyond the time when I should have started her bag because of the fabric fiasco. But I think she's going to love this, don't you? <laughs> I think it turned out very, very pretty. Uh, I'm just very pleased with it. So, Cheryl, I hope you enjoyed this bag, and uh, I look forward to making more. I'm starting another one tomorrow. Talk to y'all later. Bye-bye. Thank you, Joe, for your video. appreciate it. Um, very sweet bag. I love that Southwestern look. All right, next on our program, we want to talk about whips. I have two whips that I'm working on diligently. One whip is the ruby top that I'm making from the Knit Crate yarn that we received last month in the Knit Crate box. And this is the front of the sweater. I've already completed the back fabric. So um, that's already finished and I'm working on the front and I'm almost maybe a row or two from starting the neckline. So I'm right here. So I should be able to finish this <clears throat> very, very soon, maybe in the next few days. I'm making that with an eye hook, and this is a sport weight yarn. This is called Sugar Sport, and I received this in the Knit Crate monthly subscription box. I bought an extra hank of it, and I think I'll probably need that. Well, it's looking like I probably will have to dive into that third hank. This is how much I have left on the second hank and I'll probably be uh, working on the third hank uh, when I reach the sleeves. 
I'm going to make this in the short sleeve version, probably very similar to the America tank, even though I'm using a half double crochet for the body of the sweater and an eye hook, which is a, again, a 5.5 millimeter hook. So that is one whip that I'm working on. I've made great progress on that this week. Every time I sat down to be on the phone and watch TV, I worked on this project because it's hard to work on some of my other crafts when I'm actually watching TV with my husband. So that is the progress I've made on that whip. My second whip is the Lost No More uh, embroidery project. And this is a cross stitch embroidery. That is a picture of it right there. I have received the fabric. The fabric is marked. I took a photo of this for my Instagram feed and honestly, um, I have a lot of people that are watching this. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna finish it. I have to finish it. It's a huge project. There's 60, um, 66,000 stitches in this project. And here's the fabric that I received. It's, um, this is a 16 count Ada. I know that's a little bit large, but this is what I've done so far. 180 stitches looks like that. And I'm just going from the top left of the, the picture, and this is where it starts, right here at the top left. I have a couple of needles already uh, threaded there to, to work on this, but I went through a whole section of 100 stitches and then 80 stitches in the next. It, my first sitting, it wasn't hard to do, and the pattern calls for a half stitch, which is a tenth stitch, and in cross stitch, that's just one half of the cross. So you just make part of the X, and all of them need to really be slanted in the same direction. So I knew that from my old cross stitch days, and that's what I did here. And I don't know if you can even see that. I'm going to get that up really close so you can see it it'll focus on that but anyway that's what it looks like this is a fabric that is uh, pre-gridded and that's what I wanted so I ordered this special from TOC um, fabrics and that's called tinge of color fabrics and I'll put the link down in the description box but uh, they were very sweet they asked me did I want the edge surged and I, and so they surged the edges for me so I didn't have to do that now I, I cut the fabric down because I didn't need as much fabric as I received because this is the size they were selling. So I bought the size that I needed for my actual uh, project. And so I cut one side down and along the bottom. So I had a piece left that I took away and then I had a raw edge there. So I had to finish the raw edge. And instead of sewing it, I saw a, a tip on a YouTube channel about using washi tape, if you know what that is, W-A-S-H-I. That's the tape that a lot of people use in their planners, their paper planners, and it's lots of fun. And I did that for a tiny bit of time. I'm not organized enough to do a planner, so I just kind of gave it up. But I did have some supplies, and one supply was the washi tape. So I went ahead and put the washi tape around the edge. I used two pieces, one on one side and one on the other, and they stuck together very nicely. We'll see how well it does. I may have to surge this eventually. And then I did it also along the bottom. And then I rolled it up so that I could work on this corner of my picture. And I rolled it up and I just put some clothes pins at the bottom. Right now that's rolled up and I used a different washi tape in there. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> that's along the bottom. But uh, I rolled it up and I was able to do some work on this. So I'm not worried about it. I'm working in hand. I'm sewing it in the hand sewn style without a hoop and without um, quilt snaps. If you all know what those are, they're just white um, plastic tubes that fit together and you put your fabric over those tubes and then snap them in place and it holds them very tight. And I'm not using those right now, but I have ordered a set and they never came and Amazon said it would be coming in July. So by then I should have some of my work done already and I may not even need those. I could use them for another project, I guess. But for this one, I really wanted to work in hand. And I've even noticed that since I've been using it and, you know, scrunching it up in order to reach the area that I'm working on, um, it has softened up a little bit. It's not quite as stiff as it was. So that was my one concern, that it would be stiff the whole time. And and I would have to work too hard in order to sew it in hand. So I might use my quilt snaps, who knows? I don't know how I'm gonna do that. 
but I did get that little bit done and I took a picture of it and put it out on Instagram and I said only 65,800 stitches to go and I had a lot of people go whoa that's a lot of stitches and it is a lot but another thing I did was I took a picture of the upper left corner of the chart y'all can't see what this is it's you know you can't make anything from it but it's it's a lot of solid uh, color right in here so I should be able to whip through that pretty quickly and then it starts other colors in the other part of this particular section that I took a picture of so that's what I'm going to use and I also have it on my iPad I can squeeze it out so that I can see the numbers better and when I get into more complicated areas I'll be able to work on that a lot easier so that's the progress that I've made on my Lost No More embroidery project and I'm keeping this in one of my little bags and we'll talk about this in a minute but this is a, a vinyl front bag that I made with a zipper in it and I've got my project in there I had to cut it down just a little bit to fit him in there but I wanted to have the picture in the front so that it will give me inspiration to now keep for the finished object portion of my video I have been working on this for a while but I wanted to finish this before I really got started on my Lost No More uh, embroidery project so I finished this and I've just got it on the back of a file folder and I will take it to the framer soon but this is my Le Jardin embroidery sampler and I have finished it I've done everything it asked me to do everything is done exactly as it says I'm just gonna scroll across here and let y'all take a look at it and there's some there this also had ribbon work and I'll talk about that in one second. It has ribbon work on it, which my mom taught me how to do long ago. And it came back to me. I remember um, what she told me to do. And I read a couple directions and I saw that that's how you should do this piece of the little sampler. And these are two roses done with ribbons. And also the leaves are done with ribbon fabric. So it was an interesting stitch this whole thing it was so interesting everything was different here and if you'll notice there are some little buttons sewn on here there's some pearls in here for the eggs in the little bird's nest it's just a very interesting piece and some of the items go across the squares all the squares are different colors on along the edges so it was not a boring piece of embroidery to do and I also did the gold cord like it said but mine didn't curl up as much and I kind of like it like this so I'm just going to leave it like that and I'm going to take it to the framer and see what she can do with it um, because of this gold hanging down here I don't know what she'll do with that I'm not sure I want it in a box but uh, there are some hard pieces on here I don't know how they would do behind glass so maybe she'll have some ideas about that but that is a finished object and it's called Le Jardin, L-E-J-A-R-D-I-N, Sampler. And it's by Dimensions. You can get it at Joanne, probably online. And you can also get it from Amazon. And I'll put the links down there at the bottom of the video. And if you're interested in doing one, you can certainly do that. But it was fun. It was not difficult. And there were a lot of different stitches in here. And the directions are all in the kit. Now, one thing I will say, I ran out of two threads. And I had to substitute a couple little green pieces, but it wasn't a big deal. And a couple of um, pink pieces um, that I found in a different color that was similar to it. And I did run out of two colors. So I've heard that that's kind of something that dimensions. They put just enough floss to finish something. And I didn't use any crazy um, carrying of threads across behind, if you all know what that is. If you have some pink here and then you have some pink over here and you just drag your thread over there, don't ever do that and that waist thread and it also looks really sloppy on the back. I really like this. This is my finished object for the week and I'm just really excited about it because I wanted to finish this before I worked on my Lost No More project. So I did that. Next up is some happy mail. Just real quick. I, uh, as you know, there was a tornado here. It tore up my post office. They took my post box and put it in another post office and I tried to get to it. It was a long story, but anyway, uh, when I finally got into my post box, I had some pieces of mail, and I was really excited to see these. Nancy Gorst of Nan's Next Knots always sends me the most beautiful stitch markers. Nancy, thank you so much. And she actually has a cowl going on right now, a crochet along, and you might check her um, channel out. I'll put it in the description box. Here's one, which is a beautiful, beautiful stitch marker. It's done in purples and, and green. 
and then this one is done in a little bit of a pink color all oh, pink and purple so beautiful nancy thank you so much i'm sorry i'm so late to thank you but this was sitting in my post box for a long time i also got a thank you from a nice lady who actually won one of my giveaways and her name is cynthia so thank you cynthia for this really cute car look at those high heels on there look at those shoes actually they're shoes lady shoes very interesting to look at so thank you for that this is the section of the program where I talk about things that I purchase and I try not to purchase too much because I just don't want to spend lots and lots of money on more things that I'm not going to use. Uh, I'm surely this will be something I can use but I said last week that I was going to order some URU yarn, the Sugared Sport and this is the same yarn that I'm making my um, America Tank in the ruby color out of this is the same yarn and I just really felt a need to have a, a fourth hank of yarn of this color I had three and I bought the fourth one of this in the diamond color isn't that gorgeous it's diamond and it has a lot of sparkle on it it's very heavy into the sparkle let me show you that there we go this is the diamond color sport weight yarn from knit crate and then i ordered four hanks because they were so inexpensive i, I had some points some bonus points that i used on my knit crate um, i had bought several you know monthly boxes and they just pile up and then you go into their yarn section as a member and you can use those points so this is also the uru yarn sugared sport and this is in the beautiful purple color and this is called Lapis, L-A-P-I-S. Look at the sparkle. It shows up so well in this and also in the ruby that I'm using right now. But I have now four hanks of this and four hanks of this so that I can make winter sweaters from this. And I think that's what I'm going to use as my goal. I'm going to try to get at least one of these made in a winter sweater, maybe both. Um, I might get crazy and make a summer sweater, but I don't think I need this much yarn for that. I don't want to waste it. So I'll probably make winter sweaters from this. And my original goal was to learn how to knit. I would love to knit a winter sweater, and this is enough to do that. But I'm just not really sure I'm going to have time to knit because I'm doing some other crafts right now. And I have another craft that I want to talk about maybe next week that I'm... It's not a totally different craft, but it's a different way to do a certain craft that I'm already doing. So um, I want to talk about that maybe next now week. Now for the giveaway portion of our program. Last uh, Monday I talked about the giveaway that we're having today and that is for a project envelope that I made and this is the project envelope that I'm giving away. I made one for myself so I didn't... I'm not just giving away the only one I've ever made but I wanted to give away one of these and this is the project envelope with the vinyl front and the zipper and you can use this for embroidery projects you can use it for um, crochet projects you can use it for sock projects those of you who knit you can put a sock project in here it would fit it very easily a small sweater project um, there are lots of things you can use this for and I'll talk about that in a second more things you can use them for but this is what it looks like it's vinyl all the way to the bottom so you can see everything in your pouch and another question I'd like to ask you if I started making these, which I'm uh, thinking about doing. Would you rather that I have a piece of fabric across the bottom as well and have the vinyl above that so that you can put sharp objects in there? I don't know. I saw that somewhere and I thought, I really like the vinyl all the way to the bottom. And if you poke a hole in it, so what? I mean, you put a piece of tape on it or something. But um, I just like it to be open here so I can see everything in my bag. And then on the back is the heart material and heart was the key word that you had to put in Monday's video in order to be in the giveaway this week. So this is what we're giving away and we're going to draw that winner here in just a minute. But before that I want to tell you what I've been making this week. I said I was going to be sewing some and I did go down in my craft room and I did some sewing and as you know I did some children's bags a couple of weeks ago for my grandsons and they still don't have them yet. I have to get them up there to them but um, I'm not going to show those again because you can go back and look, but this is another one that I made for a little bit older child. This is the um, planet envelope, and this one has all the planets right here on the inside, 
And then on the back is Star Constellations. Very beautiful fabric. They're coordinated. I bought them at the same time over at Lana's Quilt Shop. Then on the zipper pull, I put a, a plane. I used a plane. The way we started was planes, and now we're into space. As you know, the last week's space um, shot was so cool. Uh, but anyway, this is the envelope, and that's what it looks like inside. It's, it has the planets inside and the constellations on the back. I really like that. This is an a, 11 inches tall this way, and it's 13 inches wide that way. And it has my label on it on the hook. And that's the first one I want to show you. The second one is the opposite of that. And this has the constellations on the inside and the planets on the back. And I really like that too because that's a big piece of fabric there. I really like that. And then on this one, I actually, um, this is a speed train. I put this on there. So this is like modes of uh, transportation. This one opens up and you know, just like the other one. And inside is the constellation. So I really like that one as well. And the color is blue. So beautiful. Um, blue like the sky. And then I decided that I wanted to make one for my viewers and subscribers that was more sophisticated. And it was made out of a designer fabric. Mm -hmm. Lana had a whole section of designer quilt fabrics and I really liked these two so I made two project bags with opposite material just like I did the last two that I showed you and this is the designer fabric in red and pink and turquoise really pretty see a little bit of yellow in there and then I've put a, um, a little uh, zipper pull with a yellow flower on that and I thought that was kind of cute and then the coordinating fabric is kind of a rainbow-ish looking fabric. It is a directional fabric, but I used it uh, on the back. And so I just wanted to show you that. I really like that fabric. It was a little more expensive or a lot more expensive than the others, but I just thought that was a neat artistic look. And since you're doing crafts and it's an artistic endeavor, then that might be a nice thing. And then on this one, I used the rainbowish looking fabric on the inside and for the two bands here. And then on the back, I used the designer, uh, the other designer fabric, both are by the same designer. And they are um, created to coordinate with each other. So I just really thought those were pretty. The turquoise with the red, I thought was a nice contrast. But on this one, I put a little tiny turquoise flower on there just to kind of give it a little bit of special pizzazz for the zipper pull. And I really like these. I've got several of them going with my projects in them. And so I'm testing the waters and hopefully I can put some of these out on my Etsy shop. I'm not ready yet. I am just not ready yet. There's so much involved when you have to take pictures and describe the product, put all your disclaimers in there and then set up all the ways that um, you ship out and everything, so I'm. Um, it's going to take me a little while, but I'm piling up some of my uh, items, and I will be putting them on my Etsy shop, even if I just have one of something to sell. I'll just go ahead and put it out there. Um, I just wanted you to know that I've made some progress on it, and it was kind of fun. I made two one day and two the next day, so um, I just took a little piece of time because I have a lot of other things that are going on. Now, for our giveaway, let's give this away. And a lot of y'all really wanted this. You like the heart fabric, and I'll be bringing that back in some other bags as well. And I may make some more of these. I think I have a couple more cut out, and I might make uh, a couple more of these. But anyway, this is my On The Hook project envelope, and it has my um, logo right there. You see it, it's on the fabric. It's actually been printed by a company onto the fabric. So I didn't print that. Somebody asked me that. I did not print that. I had a company make this fabric for me and I kind of like it. It's grown on me a little bit. So let's give it away. So let's turn the camera to the computer and find out who wins the project envelope. Okay, so here we are at our computer and the URL from last Monday is right here. The word heart was the key word. So let's find out how many people were in the running for this. And that is, still counting here, 491. Thank you for participating. We appreciate that. So let's go over here and find out 
who wins the On the Who Crochet project envelope. Here we go. And the winner is Stamper Wendy. I assume it's Wendy Stamper, but I don't know that. It says, Hi Jeannie, you have huge heart. There are these are so pretty. Thanks. Stamper Wendy. And she gives her email address right there. So I will uh, contact Wendy Stamper or Stamper Wendy and I will uh, let her know that she has won the um, project envelope with on the hook crochet fabric. Congratulations to Stamper Wendy. So congratulations to Stamper Wendy or Wendy Stamper. I'm not sure what your first name is. I would assume it's Wendy and get in touch with me. Let me know what your mailing address is and I will be glad to send that right out to you. Now, don't forget to watch this video up here and this will show Crystal's blouse that she had on today and all about it. Let me know if you want me to write the pattern and also um, let me know what you think about these project envelopes. I'm in a quandary. I'm not really sure how far I want to go with those. So be sure that uh, you leave a comment and let me know some of these things and any comments you have about anything else in my show, please let me know if you like the embroidery part, if you don't like embroidery, if you like the crochet part, uh, let me know about that as well. So uh, I appreciate everyone watching. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. So join me Monday when we find out what's on the hook.